crazy times that we're living this coronavirus quarantine. One of my last video about coronavirus was how to work from home and keep up the productivity and motivation. But many of you out there are not able to be working on home because teleworking is just not an option for everybody. So this video is going to be dedicated to those of you who are locked down, not able to be working and have a lot of time in their hands and are going a little bit crazy because they don't know what to do. So in this video, I just want to share some tips on how to spend your lockdown or what things you can do in case you are in that moment where you think you have done everything that you wanted to do and you just have a lot of time and you're stressing about the fact of having a lot of time and not knowing what to do with it. So just basically, I want to try to help you not to go insane and not to let boredom control you. Try to take this situation, which is a pretty horrible situation, as an opportunity to dedicate time to yourself and to do the things that you have wanted to do for a very long time but you always complain that you couldn't because of lack of time, which is comprehensible because when we work we're quite busy. My tip in this video is to think about the things that you have always wanted to do and you are always complaining that you cannot do and blaming other things in your life as the reason for you not doing this thing that you want. Does that make sense? I would suggest you sit down, breathe in deep and just try to give some thought on the things that you have always wanted to do and that you're always complaining and write it down and see what comes in that piece of paper where you're writing down and start doing them because now is the perfect it's the perfect time to to invest time on those things that you really want to do and I promise you when this entire quarantine goes away and you see that you have done nothing you're going to regret it I, I feel like people are going to look back and say like oh my god I, I could have done this during lockdown and I don't want that to happen to any of you. Okay, so now that I have given you my advice, I want to give you the ideas of things that you can do during lockdown. So let's get to it. Okay, so my first idea is to clean your house. And I am not talking about disinfecting for coronavirus, which by the way, you should do. But I mean like deep, deep, deep cleaning. Have you ever complained about that part of your house, which is a complete mess, and you're always saying to yourself, I should reorganize this, but you never have the time because of course, in your normal life, you work and you're very, very busy. But now is the time to go to that place in your house and to reorganize, declutter, and get rid of the things that you no longer use and give them to charity. This thing of decluttering and getting rid of things that you don't use and you're just like keeping because we keep a lot of stuff it's amazing how much stuff we can keep that we don't really need this is going to set you up in a good mood i think now is the time to do this because you have a lot of time in your hands and it really kills time because it takes a lot of time to actually declutter and reorganize a part of your house okay my second idea to do in this lockdown and i know a lot of people have done it is to get in touch with your loved ones so in my normal life, I always make sure that I am talking to my parents, that I'm talking to my sister, that I know about my family in general, but I don't stay as much in contact with other people as I want to. So I'm taking this time to take advantage and just call people that I really love. Some people are calling people just to kill time, and I don't think that it's really nice. I think you should call someone that you really love, tell them that you're sorry for not being able to be always there for them, like talking every day, because obviously life happens, you have work and you have things to do. And um, if I set myself as an example, I have a lot of friends that live abroad, so obviously we're all in different time zones. So arranging a time to talk can be really difficult because of course everybody works. So I would take advantage of this time to Get in touch with those people that you truly love, that you really miss, and you just really want them to know that you're here for them, that you love them, that they have your support. I think that it's really, really nice and very important, especially now. My next idea is to read a book. I am that kind of person that complains when my career, which is something that I love, <laughs> doesn't let me read because I love reading since I was a little girl. And I am taking the time right now to 
read a book. So just think when was the last time that you read a book, like an actual book. When was the last time? Don't you miss reading? Now it's the perfect time to just sit, relax and enjoy a good book. Or also, if you don't feel like reading, have you ever told yourself that you want to play an instrument? I really want to learn to play the ukulele and I really hope that I can learn it one day. But right now, I just cannot invest the money in getting one. But hopefully, I will be able to someday. But in case you can't afford to buy one or in case you have one in your house and you really want to learn how to play it, take advantage of this time. Put on tutorials on YouTube and you can really like invest time in learning a new instrument. Okay, my next idea is to stay active. Maybe you don't feel like working out, that's fine. I'm not going to push you to working out even though you should, but stay active. Make sure that you're not sitting down the entire day. I know it's quarantine and that you cannot go out. I know that some places uh, are allowed for you to go for a walk in the park and go running. I don't totally agree with that, but okay. But if you're that kind of person that is always in your house without moving, try to stay active. So maybe if you don't feel like working out, just walk around your house. Just make sure that you walk, even though it's like in circles in the dining room. Just like open all the doors of your house and try to like create like a path where you can walk. Just make sure that you your body is moving and that you don't go from your bed to the kitchen, to sitting down, to having your coffee, to the sofa, to watching Netflix, to the table, to sitting down, to lunch, just like make sure that you are not 24 hours sitting down. Make your body move. The fact of being sitting down all day and not keeping yourself active can mess with your sleep cycle, can make you be awake until 5 a.m., 6 a.m. binge watching Netflix. You don't want that or maybe you do in my opinion it's not very healthy now for those of you who want to do some workout but don't know how or don't find the motivation I'm happy to tell you that there are lots there are lots of challenges right now from fitness youtubers on YouTube there are yoga challenges there are Pilates challenges there are heat workout challenges just go to YouTube you can find lots of videos out there and from different styles I'm pretty sure that your style is out there all that you have to do is just look for it and start and you have like this personal trainer for you in your living room you just have to put it on your iPad iPhone connect it to the TV whatever you want to watch it and just start just start and that person talking to you and telling you come on you can do this that will give you motivation you just have to start okay my next idea is take this time to learn some meditation and yoga and breathing technique it is not natural to the human body to be in a box without being able to go out I know there are a lot of people that have this enormous house and have enough space but a lot of people out there do not have enough space in their house to move around. They don't have a terrace, they just have a window. So the fact of being locked in a house can get really stressful. It can give you lack of air feeling. It can give you anxiety. So you need to avoid these feelings to control you. And in order for you to be in control of these feelings and be able to... It's okay you need to learn how you can control this. So it is really important to learn meditation and yoga and breathing techniques in my opinion, because they really help to control this feelings. My next idea for those of you that are like me, I'm always in a constant learning mode. I love learning. Every chance that I have to learn something new, I will take it. So if you're that kind of person and you really want to learn something new and you don't really know how, well guess what? You can do an online course and maybe you the thing that just popped into your head is like, Lindsay, I don't have money. It's fine. There are online courses out there for free that you can do. My favorite websites are Coursera and EDX. You can find online courses out there that are free and they're pretty, pretty good. Those are my favorite, favorite, favorite websites. Then I have used sometimes Udemy and there's also Skillshare. Um, Skillshare I have used, not as much as the others, but I have used. I don't know 
if there are free online courses there, I think you have like a free plan, I'm not entirely sure you should have a look at it. I think there's like a free plan at the beginning and then maybe you have to pay or maybe you just have access to like free um, free courses, but check it out. My next idea, this is a really difficult time that we're all living, so I think it's really important to practice some self-care, to take time for yourself and only yourself. Take care of yourself, tell yourself how much you love you. Just think about when was the last time that you actually took care of yourself, like entirely, mind, soul and body, your whole self. When was the last time? So take advantage of these days, this weeks, this month to take care of yourself, practice self-care, self-awareness, self-love, all those things. The last idea is to have fun. But this you probably have been doing for a while. Have fun, do movie marathons, being watched Netflix, play games with the people that you live. If you live alone, then do this by FaceTime. Have fun, have a lot of fun. Just make sure this is not the only thing you do because you can get bored of this quite quickly but yeah have fun enjoy and i really hope these ideas help you and now we're going for the second part of my video which is answering questions so a few weeks ago i did an insta story and i told you guys what you wanted to know about like health uh coronavirus or anything you you were interested in and I put your questions right here a lot of questions I have to say were the same so I don't think there are a lot but I'm just going to go through them and answer them the first question is what is your happiest memory I feel that because of the fact that I am always living abroad I don't think there's this one memory that I can say is the happiest it kind of always changes I, I really have a lot of happy memories so it's kind of really hard to choose one but I would say that in this moment in this quarantine the memory that pops up the most to my head is this moment with me and my family and we're all sitting <laughs> on the table having lunch and my sister <laughs> My sister is doing this um, pronunciation of words and making my dad repeat. <laughs> it's actually very, very funny when we're kids, um, and um, I just laugh that moment. Uh, whenever I, I remember it, I just can't laugh right now. I'm getting emotional, but yeah, because I really, really miss them. But yeah, I would say that that is my happiest memory now. Where is the first place to go after quarantine? Okay. Honestly, I think that the first place to go after quarantine is going to be my work, but I think you mean like related to travel, like where is the first place you're going to go. Um, so the first place that I would like to go after this whole quarantine finishes is to Singapore. I really miss my sister. The last time that I saw her was in Christmas and I saw her for like what? Two days? Three days? No more. And I like need a big dose of my sister. I really miss her, she's like my everything. Which is the person that you're missing the most? Okay, again, I always live far away, so the quarantine is not making me miss somebody the most. People that I'm missing the most are my parents and my sister and my family, that is pretty obvious. How is your PhD going now with the quarantine? Okay, <laughs> this was, uh, question that has been asked quite a lot. Normally I'm in the laboratory and in my office doing research but now with the quarantine I, the laboratory is closed so I am basically doing a lot of article research about my topic and I am designing experiments for when we go back with my supervisors. I'm having video calls with them. How are you doing in this quarantine situation? Okay. So to be honest I am doing quite well. In terms of boredom I don't have time to get bored because I am working a lot on my PhD and also in other projects that I have coming soon. In terms of the fact of being locked down, I have had several situations in which I have this feeling of lack of air and thing. <laughs> but as soon as I do meditation and yoga, it goes away. As soon as like, I just go to my brother Alfonso and talk to him about what is happening, um, understands he helps me a lot and it goes away it's really important to have control of this uh, feelings that will that are coming to us because of being locked down where are you from <laughs> I'm from Spain um, more precisely the best place on planet earth which is 
got the self esteem. What are your best reset tips? Okay. I feel like depending on what is going on in your life, there are different research things that you can do. For example, if you're feeling stress and anxiety, I would say take a bath, <sighs> breathe, just breathe. It's very important to control and focus on your breathing. You can do breathing techniques. Uh, also, my other reset tip and it's one of my favorites, it's meditation. And I know meditation can be really hard, but um, it, it really really helps. Another thing that it's uh, really really helpful is journaling. Journaling and uh, putting your feelings down in a paper can help you to understand yourself better and to get to know what things you can do to feel okay and good. What is your dietary preference and why? My favorite diet is keto and um, I have a lot of reasons for this but I'm just going to share like the main reason. I have hypoglycemia and um, I have done a lot of uh, research on keto and keto really helps to balance your blood sugar levels and whenever I do the ketogenic diet perfectly and without missing it, I do not faint, I don't feel this brain fog, I don't feel like dizzy the entire day and whenever I eat like carbs and I just like go through this sugar high levels in my blood I feel this brain fog I feel like I want to like I'm going to faint I I feel really 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 tired and it's it's just not good so the keto diet is my absolute favorite how do you guys start with yoga and meditation you have never ever ever in your entire life done yoga and meditation you have to start slowly and with a lot of patience. It is not going, or maybe yes, you never know, but it normally it is never going to come out perfect the first time that you try it. Normally, the first time that you try yoga meditation, you're going to feel frustration that you cannot do it. Maybe not so much with yoga, but yes, with meditation. So I would tell you to start slowly with a lot of patience and start with guided meditation and guided yoga sessions. Me, myself, I can practice yoga and meditation alone, but because I really want to learn more and be a really expert on this field, I always do guided sessions. So for meditation, I either use Headspace, which has like different types of meditation. We have like meditation for sleeping, meditation for personal growth, meditation for anxiety, meditation for focus. You have lots of guided meditations there and I'm just in love with that app. Or I go to the Honest Brothers on YouTube. I really like their, uh, their meditation sessions. It's really, really good. And for yoga, actually right now in this quarantine lockdown, down I, I am doing with my bro Alfonso a yoga challenge we're actually in the second yoga challenge already a 30 day yoga challenge with Adrian but when I'm alone I always do guided sessions from Baho Beautiful she's my it's my favorite she's so lovely and the way she speaks just makes me feel so so calm and so relaxing so definitely check it out how do you celebrate your birthday well why don't you click on this link and you'll see <laughs> what is the meaning of life? I feel like you really cannot answer a question like this in a video like this. So you know what? I am going to do a special video to answer this question. What is the meaning of life? I really think the meaning of life is different for, for each person. Like every person has like a different view. There's this quote that I love. I don't actually know if it goes exactly like this, but there's this quote that I that I love it so much. I don't know when I heard it, but I heard it like uh, lots of years ago. And it goes like, life is not waiting for the storm to pass, it's learning how to dance in the rain. I love it. I just love that. And I think it speaks a lot about life. Stay tuned if you want to hear more about the meaning of life. How's your spiritual practice helping you through these times? Okay, a lot. I honestly don't know how how I would be dealing with this situation that we're all living in if, if I hadn't had yoga and meditation and my breathing techniques. Because when I practice meditation, when I practice yoga, I feel freedom. I feel happy. 
I feel calmness in my mind, I feel balance, I feel this liberation and I feel like entirely and overall at ease, you know, it, it helps me a lot and as I told you before, if you less anxious and stress and the feelings, negative feelings that are coming to us because of this lockdown get to you and control you, you can really suffer. Okay, and last question, how do you practice self-improvement? Okay, so in the mornings when I wake up, I have positive talks with myself. I practice affirmations. I really like to wake up in a really, really good mood. I also uh, try really hard to take responsibility for what happens in my life and not blame in the world or other people. I also try to incorporate good habits good healthy habits in my life and I put a lot of effort in this. I practice self-care, I practice self-love and I take a lot of time to take care of myself. I think that is really important for self-improvement. I also listen to a lot of podcasts and I am and I always trying to learn something new as I mentioned before and in a constant <laughs> learning mode. And finally I invest a lot of time in my personal growth. I think personal growth is very 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 important and it's an amazing journey and adventure that only you can live. So my loves this is the end of the video. I really hope you liked it and enjoyed it. I really really hope that you're okay. I am sending you a lot of support and love. If you have any suggestions or any opinions please leave it down in the comments I'm going to be really really happy to read about it. If you like the videos, give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button to get notified of my new videos. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you next video. Bye.